Aircraft carriers are one of the most effective instruments for power projection and dominance on a geostrategic scale. However, in the era of developing hypersonic weapons, in this era, everyone says that aircraft carriers are powerless against such weapons. Aircraft carriers have almost become mass graves for thousands of sailors. But is this really happening? In this video, we will try to understand the prospects of a formidable weapon, and we will see what are the projects of aircraft carrier construction in NATO countries. In fact, burying aircraft carriers is premature, or rather, they do not need to be buried at all. The best argument for the relevance of aircraft carriers, the plans of leading countries to further develop aircraft carriers. Otherwise, we will have to admit that the country that primarily determines that the development of earthly civilization is ruled by fools and its general staff does not know anything about the modern world. This is certainly not true. Next, we will consider the aircraft carrier project. NATO countries have analyzed the reasons why the military is in no hurry to abandon this weapon. Because the leading country in terms of aircraft carriers. This requires the creation of super aircraft carriers, such as the Gerald R. Ford class and other aircraft carriers. The United States has once again demonstrated its dominance in this field. Gerald R. Ford is the pinnacle of aircraft carrier armament. This ship is truly full of innovations that have one thing in common, both in terms of electromagnetic catapults and others. This ship uses a nuclear propulsion system because it does not require refueling, almost 50 years of service life of the ship. The new upper deck design allows this aircraft carrier to carry a larger air group, up to 90 aircraft, including the fifth generation F 35C fighter jet and AALK drones. The second aircraft carrier of the class, USS John F. Kennedy, is scheduled for delivery in July 2025. The tenth and final carrier of the class is scheduled to enter service in 2058. What are the plans for aircraft carrier construction in other NATO countries? After all, the U.S. cannot win alone in a confrontation with the South led by China and Russia. The United Kingdom, the U.S.'s closest ally, has no plans to build a new aircraft carrier. Having taken delivery of the aircraft carriers, HMS Queen Elizabeth and HMS Prince of Wales in 2017 and 2019, HMS Queen Elizabeth and HMS Prince of Wales have a total displacement of 70,600 tons, are 284 meters long and 73 meters wide. Their respective lengths are 932 feet and 240 feet. In combat situations, they carry 12 F-35B aircraft and 14 helicopters, with a capacity that can be doubled. The propulsion system is a gas turbine with a maximum cruising speed of 25 knots and can reach up to 10,000 miles. In terms of combat characteristics, the British aircraft carrier is not only inferior to the Gerald R. Ford class aircraft carrier, but also to the older Nimitz class. France has a project for a promising next-generation aircraft carrier called Portavions de Nouvelle Génération. This project will replace the French Navy's aircraft carriers. The Charles de Gaulle aircraft carrier, in service since 2001, will be replaced by the PANG project. The PANG project proposes the construction of a nuclear-powered aircraft carrier with traditional architecture, including catapult launchers and aircraft carriers. The ship would be 310 meters, 1,017 feet long, with a displacement of 82,500 tons. By comparison, the current Charles de Gaulle is 260 meters, 800 feet, long and displaces 42,500 tons. By increasing the size and weight of the structure, the PANG is planned to improve the main technical indicators in combat. The aircraft carrier will be powered by two K-22 type nuclear reactors from Technic Atomi, and three propellers will be used for propulsion. The maximum speed of the ship is expected to reach 30 knots. Large energy reserves will allow the widest application of various electrical and electronic systems, including modern radioelectronic weapons. High-performance electromagnetic catapults from American manufacturers will be used. 
the ship will have an asymmetrical flat deck with a modern superstructure and control station and increased dimensions. It should be noted that during the development of the project, the design of the island, superstructure, has undergone significant changes. The flight deck will provide two launch positions in the forward part with electromagnetic catapults, as well as a corner deck with a third launch position and an aircraft hold on the left. The corner deck can also be equipped with an additional catapult. Two aircraft elevators will be located on the right side. The ship's aviation group will include about 25 to 26 aircraft, including the latest Rafale M fighters and advanced FCAS fighters, as well as E-2D long-range radar detection aircraft and helicopters of various types. Although there have been no reports of the introduction of drones, the PANG is expected to receive an advanced electronic warfare complex for flight control, situational awareness, and interaction with other combat units. In particular, the Seafire multifunction radar will be the main means of situational awareness, with antennas placed on different sides of the superstructure to provide all-round visibility. The carrier's flight deck will have space for artillery and short-range missile systems. Strike missions will be accomplished only with air-to-surface weapons. Attention is drawn to the significant increase in size and displacement of the ship compared to existing carriers. The Pang will be 50 meters, 164 feet, longer and almost twice as heavy, allowing for a larger flight deck and larger internal volume. However, this places increased demands on power and other systems. To meet these challenges, a new nuclear propulsion system with greater power is being developed. Surprisingly, despite the increase in size and volume, the ship's payload will not differ significantly from the existing Charles de Gaulle. In terms of the strength of the air group, the reasons why the Navy will not increase the number of aircraft and helicopters are unknown. It is probably planned to focus on the potential of the equipment. So along with the currently used Rafale M, the promotional materials for the project also include a promising sixth-generation fighter, FCAS. Meanwhile, in Italy, at the end of May 2019, the new Italian universal landing ship, Trieste, was launched with a total displacement of 33,000 tons and a length of 245 meters, 803 feet. To date, Trieste can claim to be the largest ship in the Italian Navy, rivaled only by the fleet aircraft carrier. The Cavour aircraft carrier is capable of accommodating vertical takeoff and landing aircraft, such as the AV-8B Harrier II. Although the new ship of the Italian Navy, Trieste, is designated as a universal landing ship, it is at least a multi-purpose ship, or even a full-fledged aircraft carrier designed for short takeoff and landing fighters, such as the F-35B. It is not surprising that Trieste will replace the light aircraft carrier Giuseppe Garibaldi, launched in 1983. The standard air wing on Trieste includes six F-35B fighters and up to nine Augusta Westland AW-101 or NH-90 helicopters. The ship's special feature, in addition to the takeoff deck and hangar for aircraft transportation, is its tank space, with an area of more than 12,200 square meters. The ship is capable of receiving any military equipment, including main battle tanks weighing up to 60 tons. In addition, on board the Trieste, there is a docking bay measuring 50 by 15 meters, 164 by 50 feet, which can accommodate standard NATO landing craft, including four LCU landing craft or one large hovercraft, such as the American LCAC. To handle various cargoes, the ship is equipped with cranes and ramps on top and rear. The Trieste is powered by a diesel gas turbine plant that provides a maximum speed of 25 knots, with a stated range at 16 knots of 7,000 nautical miles or almost 13,000 kilometers. The Trieste can navigate for up to 30 days. The new universal multipurpose landing ship was built as part of the fleet building program adopted in Italy in 2014 to 2015 when the law on the fleet was successfully passed by Parliament.
The total cost of the program is estimated at 5.42 billion euros. In addition to the trials already established, the program also includes the construction of seven new vessels called large patrol vessels, but which are actually a new type of vessel. In addition to the vessels already established, the Italian Navy will be reinforced with two high-speed multi-purpose vessels, UNAV, and one complex supply vessel, LLS. In fact, Italy is engaged in the creation of a new group of ships similar to the American aircraft carrier Strike Group. The core of this future group will be the versatile Trieste, followed by several promising support ships and complex supply ships. Meanwhile, Turkey has added the L-400 Anadolu Universal Landing Ship to its navy in 2023. The largest ship in the history of the Turkish Navy is based on the design of the Spanish Juan Carlos the Furrier Universal Landing Aircraft Carrier. The ship has a total displacement of 27,000 tons, a length of 232 meters, and a width of 32 meters, 760 and 104 feet respectively with a crew of 261 people. In the aircraft carrier variant, the Anadolu can accommodate 10 to 12 F-35B fighters and up to 12 helicopters. Up to six additional helicopters can be placed directly on the flight deck. However, due to tensions between Ankara and Washington over Turkey's purchase of the Russian S-400 air defense system and the U.S. refusal to supply F-35 stealth fighters, the Turkish authorities are considering the use of Bayraktar TB-2 drones in the Kizilelma version, with folding wings as a temporary option. As we can see, NATO countries are building aircraft carriers, but a major breakthrough in this area is not expected until the middle of the century, when the U.S. will face the question of what will replace the Gerald R. Ford-class aircraft carriers. Despite the difficult economic situation, the United States, France, Italy, and Turkey are building aircraft carriers. The answer is simple. There is no more flexible and operational way to dramatically increase the strategic military presence in any region than with an aircraft carrier. This presence will be indispensable as the world is clearly entering another phase of its formatting. Will the West maintain its leadership or not? Today, no country in the world except China and Russia can do anything against the power of even one aircraft carrier carrying 50 to 60 F-35 fighter jets, plus several airborne radars and electronic warfare aircraft. Recently, the U.S. deployed two aircraft carriers in the Mediterranean Sea and the Persian Gulf, which made Iran wonder whether it should attack Israel. This is an example of effective power projection. As for the vulnerability of aircraft carriers to hypersonic missiles, their effectiveness against moving targets has not been proven. It is quite another to attack a stationary object whose coordinates can be entered in advance into the missile's computer memory. And quite another to hit a target moving at a speed of 30 knots. Every time a sharper sword appears, a stronger shield is immediately created. There is no doubt that in five to six years there will be effective weapons against hypersonic missiles, for example, laser weapons. After all, it is not for nothing that the Gerald R. Ford aircraft carrier now has about 300 megawatts of excess power. This power is enough to power several combat lasers. What do you think? Do aircraft carriers have a future? Share your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching. We would be happy if you give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. See you.